everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of Shonen Flop Chibi. This week, we actually have a little bit of a special occasion, right, David? Oh, yes, that's right, Jordan. Uh, I guess we just revealed it, but I'm Jordan, and this is my co-host, David. Hi, David. Oh, wait, you're supposed to tell me to say hi, David. Damn. You know what, man? You can't always be on the ball, but I respect the hustle. I mean, we've been doing this for such a long time. I, You know, it's, it's, it's even been a year, actually. Isn't that right, Jordan? Why, yes, it has been a year. A year of manga. A year of very interesting comic books to read, I would say. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, many great shows, as the great Alex <laughs> Patak would say. I'm shocked I didn't say it this time. I know, I'm, I'm really proud of you. Thank you. But yeah, so today, usually what we do is we cover the first chapter of the manga that we'll be covering in the next main episode. But the thing is, the next main episode, we're actually going to be revisiting the first series that we covered, Zitman. So there's really no point in just going over the first chapter of that, because we literally already did. What we've decided to do for our one-year anniversary episode is rank, from best to worst, all the series that we read this year. To be clear, we're going to be ranked this on just kind of our personal opinion and how much we liked it. So it's not so much critically what series is the best. You may be surprised by some of the rankings, especially as we get towards the bottom. I personally believe that like that's a more interesting way to rank things. I'm a guitarist. <laughs> I love guitar lists, like greatest guitarists of all time. But every single fucking list, the top three, it's Jimi Hendrix, Eric Clapton, and Jimmy Page. Every single one. And it's boring as fuck. So you know what? That's why they call them the big three Jimmies. <laughs> Eric is actually just another form of the name Jimmy. It actually comes from Erigemicus. Wow, that's interesting that it translates to that. But yeah, because I think pretty much if we were to say critically, the answer is Beast Children. Um, you know, we'll 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 talk about that when we get to Beast Children. <laughs> Not because Beast Children rises above being critically panned. Some of this shit's rough, man. Some of this shit's really rough. <laughs> I think Beast Children is still the worst drawn series we've ever seen. Yeah, but in terms of just, like, characters and shit, well, we'll talk about it. We'll talk yeah. about it, yeah. You ready to dive in? Yeah, we decided to go best to worst because I feel like our bests are gonna be pretty easy to figure out. Also, just as a note, we are including the three suggestion episodes. Why don't we just kick it off by saying Chainsaw Man is the best series that we have ever talked about in life on this show. I would say so. The amount of time in which we talk about Chainsaw Man, it would be disingenuous not to put it number one, honestly. As for number two, number two might be a little tricky because it is High School Family versus Mashal. I feel like you're going to say High School Family. I am going to say High School Family. <sighs> I, I'm going to say yeah. I'll agree. I think High School Family just, it puts such a smile on my face and then just Mashal, Mashal doesn't have Gomez. And I think that really clinches it. Also, Mashal... The author has to suddenly transition from having a gag manga to an action manga, and that transition is a little rough. Okay. Mashal at number three. Or, sorry, we're going to do Mashal at... No, I was High School Family at number two. <laughs> Wait, David. I was right. I was right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Don't second guess yourself, David. Shut up, Dad. Have confidence. We're going to do High School Family at number two, and then number three is going to be Mashal. All right, so then now, now we actually get into it, but I think number four, probably about as easy as number one, to be honest, where I think the best series we've ever read that was an actual flop was Time Paradox Ghost Rider. I agree. The thing is, it's like, we talked about this to people uh, later, and they, they have issues with some plot holes and stuff, but like, at the end of the day, I felt like the plot holes weren't plot holes because the series was operating on a more metaphorical like fourth wall breaking way the fact is i just had like a genuine emotional reaction to time paradox ghost Rider in a way that pretty much none of the other manga even approached i completely agree it has the advantage of probably being the only one that really told like a very complete story without having to jettison a bunch of material it actually legitimately felt like it benefited from getting canceled I would say number five is Mora King. Yeah, I would actually agree because I had the thought, what would I recommend to somebody? What this really is right now is it's a battle. Like, there's no doubt in my mind your number six is going to be Mitama's Security Spirit Busters, right? Uh, no, actually. Oh, that's interesting. Do you want to take a guess what I put higher? Cool Shock PT? No, I put Samurai 8. Oh. Samurai 8 was just... Kind of a whole package, like, it really didn't do a lot of things terrific, but it didn't do anything badly. I would say Mitama Security Busters, yeah, had some 8s and 9s, but it had some 4s and 5s, while Samurai 8 was really just a 7 across the board. Yeah. I wish I could say it was an 8 across the board, but... I understand that. It is definitely the series that has the most potential to be recontinued, I would say. Yeah, like that could have gone for another 300 chapter. Yeah, unfortunately for me, as it stands right now, I prefer Mitama Security Spirit Busters. But I also, I totally understand where you're coming from there, and I don't mind putting Samurai 8 at number 6. 
I am perfectly fine putting Mitama under that. At the end of the day, if somebody's like, hey, which manga should I read? More King Samurai 8 or Mitama? Almost generally speaking, I'm going to recommend More King to that person. Yeah. So the problem is I think Mitama kind of overstayed its welcome a little bit. Like yeah. we said, I think if Mitama was 30 chapters, I would have posted it higher. But I just kind of got bored of the series. And I talked about it in the episode as well. I also agree that it did kind of benefit in some ways from getting cancelled. Mora King felt like it had more gas, but it's also just more delightful. <laughs> <laughs> it is. But yeah, so, uh, number eight. I personally put Cool Shock BT. I did too. Oh, so the way I did this was I really broke down the series into series that I liked, series I thought that were okay, series I thought were not good, and series that I thought were atrocious. So really four groups. And I consider Cool Shock BT to kind of be the gradient between series I liked and series that were just like, I read it for the show, I didn't mind reading it, but like, you know, it was fine. Yeah. It was good. It definitely didn't overstay its welcome because it was effectively 10 or 11 chapters. I feel like if Cool Shock BT was 30 chapters, I probably would have ended up not liking it. I agree. It's hard to separate Cool Shock BT, like, its quality from just being a fascinating artifact. It's also Cool Shock BT is about 15 years older than any other series we'd ever read. Right. The Otherwise, the oldest series we read was, like, 2000s, so this being in the 80s really had a big gap. This was, like, from a time when manga itself was just a completely different thing. Like, just stylistically totally different. And it was absolutely fascinating to read. Even not just as a, an artifact of Iraqi, but just an artifact of 80s manga it was fascinating yeah this pre fist of the north star style manga it's definitely i think everyone who's a fan of jojo should read it it's literally 10 minutes and you get to see just where rocky really came from and it's just an interesting experience to read too even if it definitely has some issues okay so actually i lied last time this is where the tricky stuff is gonna start because i put our blood oath here oh whoa that's pretty different from you huh do you want to guess what I put? Uh, Zipman. No, I actually was guessing that you were going to put uh, Dark Mage here. <laughs> I put Robot Laser Beam because Robot uh. Laser Beam is actually quite good and then it just shits the bed in the later half. Yeah, the first half of Robot Laser Beam is a good manga. Pre time skip, I think I probably would have at least put that above Cool Shock BT. So the robot, but not the laser beam. Yeah, the robot. <laughs> It's an interesting thing to consider. Can you say that a series is better if you can just stop reading after a period of time? I mean, that's what people do with Sword Art Online is they just watch the first season and then they stop. Yeah, I would say that's true. I mean, the reason I put Our Blood Oath there is that I really think that it has like a couple moments in that series that just elevate it. Like there's just a couple really, really good panels in there. And just the ambition that the author has and the story that he's trying to tell. But I actually, I do agree with you, Robot Laser Beam is better. Here's the thing. It definitely has some great moments, but that's like, you could say that about Beachy. And I don't think anyone's like, oh, Beachy was one of the better series just because it had some really interesting panels. Because that series was kind of shit. Spoilers, that's near the bottom of my list. I absolutely will concede that Robot Laser Beam is better, and I'd probably just put our blood a little higher. But hey, that's the nature of this list. <laughs> you just really stand that series. Dude, something about it, man. It just clicked with me. He has a very good grasp of storytelling that, like, other manga artists struggle with. I totally agree. The next thing I had on the list was Dark Mage, which really I thought was, like, the quintessential series you liked more than me. I actually lowered Dark Mage a bit. Really? The art is amazing. I feel like it had potential to be a lot better, but at the end of the day, as much as I like it, and as good as he is at it, it, it feels a little generic fantasy. That sounds fair to me. I'm perfectly fine lowering this on the list, so where would you like to put it as number 10 on our list? You know what? I'm fine with putting Dark Mage there, actually. <laughs> Loving it. So just to recap, Chainsaw Man, High School Family, Mashal, Time Paradox Ghost Rider, Mora King, Samurai 8, Matama Security, Spirit Busters, Cool Shock BT, Robot Laser Ream, and Dark Mage make up our top 10. For number 11, I would like to put our blood oath there. You know what? I'll, I'll give it to you. I can see why. That was also a great episode. It was so cool we had the Viz translator on it. Yeah. Stephen Paul, if you're listening, thanks again for being on the show. It was a lot of fun. We look forward to more series you're working on getting canceled so we can have you back. Yeah. So for number 12, I would put Stealth Symphony. That's what I had. Wow. Deadass. It has a lot to like in it, but it just completely shits the bed in the second act. No series we've ever read just shit itself harder, where the author just gave up. I mean, it has the wildest ending of any series we had ever read. The ending was, like, so crazy, and the author just leaned the fuck into it. Yeah. Like, it redeemed a lot of the series to me, but nothing can redeem how fucking bad that second act is.
it's just absolutely bananas. The art is also fantastic. The art is some of the best shit I've seen in Shonen Jump. Like, just fucking amazing. Just, like, absolute top-tier manga art. And I really like the Glass Dragon. Oh, that is true. He's invisible. What did you have for the next one? Uh, I had Zipman. Zipman. Interesting. Yeah. So I actually thought about that, and I had it back and forth, and I put Golem Hearts over Zipman. Because Golem Hearts, I feel the writing was just a lot better. I know the art isn't great, but I dropped Zipman when I read it when it was coming out. Yeah. In a way that I don't think I would have dropped Golem Hearts. You know what? I'm going to agree with you. Because here's the thing. I have a lot of fondness for Golem Hearts. Yeah. Every time I think back about it, I'm just like, oh, Golem Hearts. There was no part of that series where I was like, oh, this sucks. It was just kind of like a little disappointing and kind of dragged. And then it ended. But it just, it had heart, man. <laughs> exactly. All right, so this, we'll put Zipman next. Yeah, Zipman, the next one. Yeah. What do you want to say about Zipman? Uh, I think we're going to say a lot about it in our next episode, so maybe we'll hold off on our thoughts. <laughs> so next, to be honest, this middle point is really the hardest one to rank it, just because a lot of these series are very bland, and it's hard to really remember like their strong points. A lot of them are very similar quality-wise. Yeah, so I would say like a really great example of probably the average quality of the series we read is what I had for number 15, which was Ozu. Oh, I had Ozu way lower. What did you have? It's funny, because even though it isn't Ozu, it's Bulge of the Warring Planets. You had Bulge before Ozu? Yeah. I thought about that too, but I put Barrage lower just because I remember it's literally the same plot twice, and the ending just doesn't make any sense. I just remember, like, Ozu at least had really cool character designs and had some fun character moments. I just think Barrage had nothing that sticks out to me as a singular thing. It was in our Curse of the Blandness. In some ways, yes, but the thing is, I just remember how bored and miserable and long Omega Doki Zoo felt. That is true, you're right. It's like three times as long. Give you Bulge. Barrage is number 15. Thank you for giving me the Bulge. The Brave and the Bulge. So then what did you have under Barrage? I actually had Neolation. Really? Yeah. I had Double Arts. Double Arts? I can see that. Yeah, I, I mean, the thing about Neolation is every now and then there'd just be something that happened where I was like, oh, I like that. Yeah. Hey, I really like the the one female character they had, even though unfortunately it was only one. Yeah, it definitely actually treated women with some respect more so than other series, like especially, some kind of, I mean, like Guardian of the Witch. Keep in mind, we're grading on a massive curve when we say that too, like. Yeah. I mean, also, don't forget that Double Arts is, like, 10 years older than most of these art series, so you have to give it that, too, that this literally came out in, like, 2004 or something. I mean, Neolation did have the weird stalker monk that we were supposed to love, even though he was literally stalking the main character's sister. <laughs> I forgot about that part. Yeah, I don't know. I, I would probably put Double Arts above... <laughs> I don't know, because the thing is, like, Double Arts is just so bland. Neolation does shit where I'm like, okay, well, I haven't seen that before. All right, fine. I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you Neolation. I actually had Neolation pretty low on my list. I, I actually put it below some of the, like, ironically bad series. Oh. But I think you're right. Maybe I was forgetting some of the better parts. So we're going to do Neolation and then Double Arts. Double Arts, on a technical level, the best drawn cover art we ever had. Because, man, Jen really put her heart and soul into that art. She was like, I got paid $75 to draw fan art. Yeah, she loved doing that. And you can tell, because she did a fucking great job. She did. Just like the cover art for our episode of... <laughs> That's definitely my favorite art so far, is what we have for High School Family. <laughs> yeah. So do you want to circle back and put Zoo, or do you still have it lower for number 18? Well, I have it lower. Uh, but if you want to put it in there, then like, I don't mind doing it because this is supposed to be our combined list. So yeah, I just I think it's like it has cool character designs. It has some fun characters. You're right. It is longer than it needed to. But I mean, it's 18th place. It's not like, you know, it's breaking yeah. the top 10. But it's not also it didn't have anything that was a god awful about it. Like some of the series we're going to be talking about soon. I mean, no, the god awful thing was the rabbit character. Fuck that guy. But <laughs> yeah, no, I'm totally fine with putting it right mm -hmm. below double arts, actually. And then the question is, we're starting to get into the so bad it's good territory. I think. I think the last series that doesn't have that read it because it's so bad it's good quality is probably Hungry Joker. Interesting, because I put Guardian of the Witch over Hungry Joker. Really? I just think Guardian of the Witch, yeah, it's bland, but Guardian of the Witch had such a terrible message to it. Yeah, but my god, Hungry Joker, you read that shit, I hated every character. I, <laughs> I fucking hate that main character especially. Fuck that guy. I just remember like trying to force myself through that. It was just really tough to get through. I will give you Guardian of the Witch and then Hungry Joker. I mean, it's not like Guardian of the Witch is much better than Hungry Joker. No, it's not. I mean, 20th place. <laughs> yeah. We're really, we're arguing who gets 20th place out of 25. Guardian of the Witch, yeah, it absolutely has a horrible message. The main female character's superpower is that she suffers and that gives her power. That sucks. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's terrible. Are you ready to really move into the, like, complete garbage pile? Oh, yeah. So, 
this is the time where I'm going to say Beast Children because that is definitely the best read it because it's so bad good series. It's bad, it's good series. I completely agree because I kind of weirdly love Beast Children. It is our first atrocious series we read. It's a terrible series, but it's a funny series. <laughs> if you ever want to read one series, ironically, Beast Children is just great to look at like how bad a series can be in the book. It's harmless, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it does really funny shit. Like I got to show somebody some panels from it the other day and it was like, I was reminded of how with the rugby ball, they just used a black and white JPEG and it was the same JPEG every single time resized and rotated. That's hilarious. It's called being efficient with your art. Fuck. Yeah. No, that's just good artistry. What are you talking about? Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Work smarter, not harder. What did you have under Beast Children? So now I have Phantom Seer. This is probably the hottest take on my list. I had Tokyo Shinobi Squad because that is a series you just need to read to experience it. Here's the thing. Tokyo Shinobi Squad is worse than Phantom Seer. It is paced like shit. It has some really funny moments. Terrorist Town. Terrorist Town is hilarious. It's none of the humor's on purpose. It's just how funny someone thought of the shit was. See, this is the tough part, because um, Phantom Seer is drawn better. There are one or two moments that are, I would say are good, mm -hmm. primarily in the first chapter. Jim Naruto. Well, that's Tokyo Shinobi Squad, because the difference is that Tokyo Shinobi Squad is also racist. I just, man, Phantom Seer was just so fucking boring. I don't know, because I, I really like having Tokyo Shinobi Squad. Last? Like, yeah, it's it's last. Really? <laughs> oh, that was not what I put last, but we'll see. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like if you want to say like a series that was dog shit, I liked Bone Collection more than Phantom Seer, because Bone Collection at least had those so bad it's good elements to it. Thinking about it more, I agree, because here's the thing. Every now and then I'll be like, look at this dumb thing that, like, Tokyo Shinobi Squad did. Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> Terrorist Town. Terrorist Town. This is the funniest thing I've ever read in a man. Globalism has caused all of our problems. Oh my god, it's insane. There's literally nothing in Phantom Seer that I would ever take out and show some. Uh... The female posing. Okay, okay, maybe, but uh, that's it's still boring. That's just typical manga shit. That's not like crazy. Oh wow, you found a manga that drew a woman in a really compromising pose for no reason other than obvious fan <laughs> service. That's so strange. No, that's way more ubiquitous than a fucking terrorist town. And remember how Sia and Mr. T yeah. are actually into you. I know, right? <laughs> And then, like, the ending where just the bad guy shows up because the author was like, oh, shit, I have to end this with a big fight and I don't have anyone for him to fight. Fuck. Yeah, and he just gets his master and just whoops his ass. For, he just shows up to yeah. beat his ass and disappears. I will agree with you, actually. Now that we're talking about it, yeah, I would put Tokyo Shinobi Squad right under. All right. The remaining four series, Jordan, that we have to talk about. SWAT, Phantom Seer, Beachy, and Bone Collection. I'm going to put Beachy there. I had Bone Collection a little bit higher, but if Beachy did actually have some good moments while i don't think bone collection actually had anything good to it so bone collection had three chapters that were decent oh that's true you're right everyone was like this seems pretty good for the first three and they're like nope never mind for the first three chapters it was absolutely salvageable and then just nope gone yep that sounds very right. awful yeah beachy would have been better if every chapter was cut in half Oh my god, that was one of the most painful series to read. Especially when we found out with double chapters. Ugh. All these series we're talking about suck. Yeah, I mean, fucking Riley where he skipped every three chapters and he didn't miss anything. We had no idea, yeah. Fucking legend. Beachy is at least also very interesting. Kind of like Cool Shock BT, although Cool Shock BT is obviously way better. Beachy is interesting because the author went on to make some really good series. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would put that there. It seems like you somewhat agree. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Now we are approaching the championship. Yeah, the top three worst series we've ever read. SWAT, Phantom Sierra Bone Collection. I definitely got to put Bone Collection above those two. Ooh. Fuck, I don't know. Phantom Seer, I almost want to say. Like, <laughs> it's not because Phantom Seer does anything good. I want to be clear. Well, the art is quite good. Yeah, that's the thing, I guess, is the art is actually competent, whereas it is not competent in either Bone Collection or Slot. Mm -hmm. They both look like absolute dog shit. Phantom Seer at least looks pretty good, usually. Yeah. Like, of the two people working on Phantom Seer, one of them is at least competent. But on the other side, I feel like I never have to read Phantom Seer ever. Ever again in my life. Phantom Seer than Bone Collection? <sighs> See, for me, the Bone Collection versus SWAT is very difficult for me. Uh, Bone Collection at least had three good chapters. SWAT never had anything good ever happen in the entire series. The best 
thing about reading SWAT was how it was really funny how I had to keep telling Aaliyah to make the main girl's boobs bigger on the art like four times because she kept like not realizing how outrageously large her boobs were. That was really the best thing I got out of my SWAT experience. I would agree with you. You know what? This conversation, I think I have changed my mind. I actually, I think I want to put Bone Collection above Phantom Seer because Bone Collection fucking sucks. Bone Collection mm-hmm. is a complete dog shit manga. I've mentioned it before. Bone Collection is a series where the main character gains powers by groping his fiance. He sure does. That fucking sucks. And it also just is drawn, paced, mm-hmm. and told like shit. But the first three chapters show a little bit of promise. Yeah. And it's at least creative. Phantom Seer is the mm-hmm. least creative thing I've ever read. Except for maybe SWAT. Yeah, SWAT is like, what if we made a shitty, bland <laughs> version of Bleach? It doesn't even get to Bleach. <laughs> it doesn't even get there. It's interesting, though, how SWAT, Phantom Seer, and Bone Collection all seem like they're trying to be Bleach. All right, Bone Collection, Phantom Seer, SWAT. I suppose so. Let's talk about Phantom Seer. It's just, I guess we already have. It really sucks. It's so bo- fucking boring. I wanted to pull my hair out while I was reading it. It is the definition of how it is very often better to be either really good or really bad than it is to be boring. However, not only is Phantom Seer extremely mediocre and boring, it's also very bad. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really how it works. And then let's talk a little bit about SWAT. <laughs> what more is there to say about SWAT? The, see, that's the problem. What the fuck can you say about SWAT? It's just bland. It makes you feel empty. And I'm glad that we probably never have to read SWAT again for the rest of our life. I remember so little from it. Yeah, we'll never read it again <laughs> until like next year. Next year we'll do we'll do Golem Hearts revised properly. I would like to do Beast Children at some point. We'll do Beast Children revised for episode 100. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. I think it was like the Colbert Report did that where every year they would revise the next episode. So like we'll do, what was it? Uh, Robot Laser Beam revised. And then we'll do Beast Children revised. And then Garden of the Witch revised. And then, <laughs> oh God, imagine if this podcast went on for five years. <laughs> Are you saying it isn't? I thought I was going to do this for the rest of my life, David. We're going to be like the McElroys or the McElroys, as I say. <laughs> This is our job now. Jordan, why don't you just, from the top, read off to our dear listeners how we ranked the first 26 series that we have read for Shonen Flop. Okay, so number one, no surprise, it's practically a meme, Chainsaw Man. Number two, High School Family. Number three, Mashal. Number four, Time Paradox Ghost Rider. Number five, Mora King. Number six, Samurai 8. Number seven, Mitama Security Spirit Busters. Number eight, Cool Shock BT. Number nine, Robot Laser Beam. Number 10, Dark Mage. Number 11, Our Blood Oath. Number 12, Stealth Symphony. Number 13, Golem Hearts. Number 14, Zipman. Number 15, Barrage. Number 16, Neolation. Number 17, Double Arts. Number 18, Omega Doki Zoo. Number 19, Guardian of the Witch. Number 20, Hungry Joker. Number 21, Beast Children. 22, Tokyo Shinobi Squad. 23, Biichi. 24, Bone Collection. 25, Phantom Seer. And the winner of the first ever Shonen Flop shitty manga ever award goes to SWAT. It fucking earned it, David. Congratulations. Congratulations. I'm very proud of it. It put in the goddamn work and it succeeded. I just, it's really a lot of work to have made something that absolutely dog shit. But at least now we'll remember it as the worst thing we've ever had to read for this show in terms of just what we thought of it. Or will we? What contenders will next year bring? Oh man, we've got some fun stuff lined up. Can't spoil anything just yet. But we've got we've got some fun series in the works. Don't you worry. We've got some really terrific guests coming up, too. It's going to be great. I'm down for the second year of Shonen Flop, David. I can't fucking believe it. <laughs> Shonen Flop ship it in. Thank you so much for being so great and for being a great co-host for this year, man. Me too, man. Man, I, it really sucks I'm going to have to replace you, but that's okay. That's all right. I never, I wouldn't do the show without you, buddy, unless, unless the money was in it. But no, <laughs> uh, no, but this has been a lot of fun. I had a great time. And then Jordan, just as a one off, we absolutely adore the high school family art. What would you say besides that one? What is your favorite art piece that we've ever had drawn? It's really ironic, but I really liked the art for the SWAT episode. The SWAT episode was great. That was kind of one of the best jokes and ideas that we had for the cover art, I would say. I think that's solid, and I appreciate it because that was my idea, so good job, David. My absolute favorite, I think I have to say, is the Mashal one, where we have Mashal uppercutting Harry Potter. Oh, fuck, you're right. That really just came together perfectly. And that was my idea. That's so cute! We like each other's, but we liked each other's ideas. It's, it's like collaborative process. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, there you have it, everybody. An objective list on which manga is, without any debate, better than other ones and worse than other ones. And if you disagree, you're just fucking wrong. But anyway, thanks for listening. You can find us on Twitter, at Shonen Flopcast. You can find our website at shonenflop.com. Of course, you can find us on any podcatcher of your choice. We are also on YouTube, Shonen Flop. I can't wait to have the next episode on Zipman. It's going to be a lot of fun. Just like how you said, no debate debate except for all the debate we just had in that episode because that was the point well that's what i mean we we had the debate we nobody else <laughs> has to have the debate anymore you're we right did it. we've settled it we've settled it yeah so if you listener though disagree and you have a different order you are more than welcome though to tweet us email us at shonenflopcast at gmail.com or of course just post it on the discord where we always have conversations and you're just open to join the community we've got a book club anime nights people play games together it's a lot of fun uh, i really can't believe we have almost like 200 people on our discord which is really awesome i wake up and there's like 10 posts at like 8 a.m because we have a bunch of UK people in it now. We're big in England. I was talking to Miriam about it. We're going to go visit Hassan next year. So if you want to come. I would love to. If you too, listener, want to come visit Hassan, the <laughs> nicest man in podcasting, you can join the Discord and we'll, talk, we'll, we'll make a visiting Hassan planning channel. <laughs> but yeah, with that, I'll catch you later. David? Keep on flopping, floppers. <laughs>